great ones are willing to get burned time and again as they sharpen their swords in the fire. Josh Waitzkin Lazio Polgar was a Hungarian researcher who developed a theory that greatness was a skill that could be taught, not something that certain people were inherently born with. He studied over 400 prodigies and geniuses to find patterns that could be repeated. Laszlo wanted to prove his theories, and with the help of a Ukrainian woman who became his wife, his experiment would involve his own children. Laszlo decided to teach his children chess. While one of them may have an affinity for the game, it was nearly impossible that all three would have a gift for the game. Plus, chess has clear objectives, a ranking system, and a strong history of games and material to learn from. Unlike singing, writing, or many other endeavors, which could stand to be debated on what was world class, chess had a clear, defined line. Neither he nor his wife were very good at chess either, so the test would not be skewed in his favor. Lazo ended up having three daughters, Susan, Sophia, and Judith. Susan, being the oldest, became a grandmaster in 1991. She was the first woman to qualify to play for the World's Men's Championship Tournament and the first woman to win the chess triple crown. The middle child, Sophia, is legendary for what is known as the Sack of Rome. She scored 8.5 out of 10 in a tournament held in Rome in 1989 against very strong competition. This performance has been rated as the fifth best tournament performance by anyone, ever. The third daughter, Judith, surpassed both of her sisters and is widely regarded as the best female chess player of all time. The list of Judith's accolades is far too long to list, but suffice to say that she changed the game for female players and is the only female player to have surpassed the coveted 2700 ELO barrier. Laszlo's experiment was a resounding success. To some extent, he proved that any child that is born healthy can become an expert, even world-class, with the right upbringing and effort. While the circumstances surrounding this experiment probably are nothing like what your life looks like, there are still some key lessons that we can learn from the Polgar sisters' experiment. First is that effort beats talent. The Polgar sisters' experiment lends credence to the theory that effort is more important than talent. Each of the three sisters was estimated to have studied and practiced over 10,000 hours of chess by the young age of 12. None of them were geniuses, with estimated IQs between 120 and 140, but they diligently and deliberately spent hours on the game. My father believes that innate talent is nothing and success is 99% hard work. I agree with him, Susan Polgar said. It's pretty unlikely that you have 10,000 hours to study and spend on any skill. You are likely well past your teen years, but that doesn't mean that you can't use this information. This means that, starting today, you need to spend as much time and effort on your goals and skills that you want to develop as you can. Number two. The world only sees results. When we see stars on the television or news reports, it's always about the results they achieved. They accomplished this, or this person did that. If anyone mentions the hard work they had to go through to get there, it's usually glossed over. The fact is that chess players at the top level don't get lucky. They all work extremely hard, with hours, days, months, and even years of study put into play. If you look at the top performers for tennis, soccer, basketball, and many other sports, you see the same trend. It's no different in business. Warren Buffett started investing at 11. Bill Gates wrote his first program at 13. Elon Musk had already sold a video game by the time he turned 13. When you see someone at the top of their field in anything, realize that they almost certainly worked very hard for a very long time to get there. Number three, expertise is within your reach. To achieve anything truly great, you must first believe that you can. 
By believing that effort beats talent, you lay the foundation for believing that if you work hard enough, you can accomplish any goal that you set your mind to achieve. Number four, mastery requires interest. Possibly the hardest part of Laszlo's experiment was getting his daughters interested in chess. We've talked a lot about the hard work and effort that greatness requires, but it's unlikely that you'll get there without an interest in the topic of your pursuit. For Laszlo, getting Susan interested was probably the hardest sell. Both Sophia and then Judith had an interest in the game passed down to them from Susan. In order to reach the 10,000 hours of practice by 12, the sacrifices the girls would have had to make would have been impossible if they didn't feel strongly for the game of chess. If they had become more interested in school, music, or boys, then chess would have taken a backseat and they may not have put in the time or effort required. Only by making chess their number one interest were they able to push other things aside and focus on being great chess players. And lastly, number five, sacrifice. All three of the Polgar sisters were homeschooled, and Laszlo did this so that he controlled how much the girls studied. Many subjects that an average kid their age might have spent time on like social studies, was pushed aside for math, language, and of course chess. Not to mention that they really didn't have social lives. Their worlds revolved around the game of chess and getting better. While this is extreme, what could you give up to reach your goals? How many times has someone talked about starting a business or a side project only to spend the entire weekend drinking and socializing with their friends during their free time? How many goals are established on New Year's Eve only to be given up because they are too hard, take too much time, or require someone to change? Theodore Roosevelt was quoted as saying, With great victory comes great sacrifice. Greatness requires effort, interest, and sacrifice. No one is going to pat you on the back during your journey, only once you've achieved your goal. Thankfully, the Polgar sisters prove that effort beats talent, and anyone can be great. Remember, great ones are willing to get burned time and again as they sharpen their swords in the fire. The Polgar sisters, and the experiment named after them, is an inspiring story and one full of lessons. There are several good books and movies about the three, if you'd like to dig deeper into their lives. The key takeaway from their story is with the right amount of time, effort, and practice. Anyone can be great. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Do you have a concept like this that you'd like to see explained and made into a video? Leave your ideas in the comments below, and we'll do our best to make an animation for them. Also, before you go, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to help us continue to grow.